I want to start with um, with the Trump campaign, which you know, it, it, it seems has had a rough couple of weeks trying to redirect to a whole new opponent uh, in Kamala Harris. Um, I'm wondering if there's is there have there been changes made? Is, is there is there any, you know, that, that you've heard of that are they are they focusing in a different way? Because I, I feel like now they actually have some pretty good ammunition coming out. Kamala's starting to make some mistakes. They can't conceal her forever. Um, what are you hearing? Yeah, Rob, do you mean it's not usual for here in August us to have just gotten the, the candidate yeah, no that we're kidding. actually going to have to run against? Do you mean that? Do you mean Joe Biden saying on a Friday he would it would take an act of God to get him out of the election and then he drops out 48 hours later? All of that. Yeah, it's yep. pretty remarkable. So, yes, we've had to adapt and change course to an extent. But look, Kamala Harris has been remarkably unremarkable, right? This is a woman who's done literally nothing. A lot of people looked around about three months ago in the mainstream media and said, should we actually replace Kamala for Joe Biden's running mate? Like, should she actually yeah. be that person? That's how poorly she performed as a vice president. So she's remained out of the scene. No one has really heard from her. She was John Carl, the border czar. I hate to break it to everybody over there. She was the border czar and she did nothing there. And so, yeah, you're trying to figure out who is this person? What has she done? We know she's a flip -flop flopper. We know she's very inauthentic. I mean, they don't get more inauthentic than Kamala Harris, a person who was a tough on crime prosecutor, put a lot of people away for crimes like marijuana crimes. Then you fast forward to when it's politically convenient for her to go the opposite way and bail rioters who burned down the city of Minneapolis yeah. out of jail. She's right there in line with them. And now apparently she's back to being tough on crime. These are the things that the American people don't like. And that is what we have to target as the campaign and yeah. as the RNC. We have to focus in on that. This is the very definition of disgusting politics. Yeah. Politicians never want to actually fix a problem because that's what they're going to run on no. time and time again. And here we are with Kamala Harris. That ad you played earlier on the border, I hope it did make people sick. It's disgraceful. It's disgusting. It is completely false. And then you contrast that, Rob, on the other side with arguably the most transparent and authentic right. president and candidate we've ever had. And that's his, that's, his best, that's his best weapon, too, is that, I mean, people have watched how Washington works for such a long time. That's why he was, he was such right. a, a star when he came out in, in 2016, because nobody had ever seen anybody like that. And, and just to know that he, he, he gets in and he does what he said. I mean, we're, we're on the cusp. I mean, if, if Kamala wins, we're going to have the flakiest president in American history. I mean, she is an incredible flake. Yeah, she'll change, I mean, she'll, she'll change she'll, her mind with as the wind blows. As the wind, anything. Matter. I mean, she, she, could, yeah. she could flip parties tomorrow if it means she'd get into the right. White House. She'd be a Republican in 10 minutes if it meant something better <laughs> for her future. I mean, she believes in nothing, which is so dangerous because we know that the people right. that are really controlling her party are really dangerously <laughs> left. So this, this, is a, this person has no spine. I want to show you the cover of Time magazine. For, this, is for, yeah. for, this is for a woman that hasn't done one interview yet. Uh, I mean, this is this is like something you see out of North Korea. I mean, look at this this <laughs> drawing here. I mean, it's it's just it's this is so pitiful. The media is, I mean, the, the biggest surrogate they have, and why this has been so easy. Why this has been so easy for her is because the establishment media in this country has just propped her up. They're acting like it's her. And I'm hearing it on all the, on MSNBC. They're talking about how amazing she is. She's such a political dynamo. She's nothing. She just anybody you could have a house plant could get this far if you pushed it through all of the all the avenues in the media. You know, some people, Rob, might say that it feels like there was an orchestrated plan behind the scenes that the media went very heavily against yeah. Joe Biden to the point that you couldn't turn away and look the other way and say, oh, well, this guy's doing great. They should keep him in this race. Some would say that it feels like it's now gone the opposite direction, and they are all galvanizing their support behind this person. Not only has Kamala Harris not done a single interview or a press conference like Donald Trump did last week, we also don't know her policies. You, we don't know anything that this person is running on to become the next president yeah. of the United States. I'm sure she'll be happy to tell us what her policies are as soon as the machine behind her, the same machine that's been yeah. behind Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in that White House for three and a half years, as soon as they tell her what her policies are, then she'll give them to us. She has exactly. no idea. She's a shell and just that, like Joe Biden. And that is the scary thing for the American future if and, she's ever elected. And that machine is an Obama machine. So if you want to know what, what, where that's going to take her, Look out. And her vice president is, as we've oh. said, a devout Marxist.